Sawatages Kipoli. So we're back for the perfect system passive indicative. So let's get started. So um, let's talk about um, a little bit what we did last time. The perfect system means three tenses, perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect. Now, I say them in that order because the perfect is the most important. That's where we get the stem from. But also, it's the most commonly used in Latin as well. Uh, pluperfect is the next most commonly used of the three tenses. And the future perfect is actually pretty rarely seen. But it's still there enough so that we need to talk about it. Um, and enough for the Romans to have given it a whole new ending. Okay, so um, similar things except we're talking about the passive. Remember, the nominative with the passive verb is no longer doing the action. Um, they are the ones receiving the action. And in a passive verb, there is no accusative. Okay, so sentences like um, the dog is walked by straw. Okay, so the dog is not the one walking itself. Okay, that's the one receiving the action of being walked. Um, so the dog is being walked by straw. By straw is a, a prepositional phrase. So it's not an accusative, but it shows who's actually doing and performing that verb. Okay, so let's look at the forms in Latin. Um, this, I think, is the first time you've used the fourth principal part of a verb. So let's think about Old Faithful here. Amo, amare, amawi, amatos. Amatos would be your fourth principal part. And we're going to use that fourth principal part in its form. We aren't going to actually change it unless you want to change the gender. But we'll talk about that later. So the same examples we've been using. Paratos is the fourth principal part of paro, parare, parawi, paratos. Um, and you see it here in the masculine. We'll talk about when to switch it to the feminine. And then we have monere, moneo, monere, monui, monitos. And we see it here again in the masculine. Uh, and this does change a tiny bit. Okay, so we see it changing um, from the first three to the second three. And that's because the first three in any verb conjugation are singular. So we use a singular masculine ending, us, us, us. And then we use a plural masculine ending for the other ones, e, e, e. These are all second declension nominative forms. Nominative singular, us, nominative plural, e. Same thing for any other verb. The only time you're going to change your gender is when your subject is a different gender. So if the subject is masculine, you're going to use the masculine forms. If it's feminine, it's going to be a, 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 i, i, i. If it's neuter, it's going to be um, 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 a, a, a. Okay? So let's talk about what else you need. Fourth principle part by itself is something entirely different. It's still perfect and it's still passive, but it isn't indicative, which means it's actually happening. So, uh, let's look at what happens, what we need. We need, and a whole nother word, this is a two-word format. That's what I always call it. Perfect passive forms are always two words. You start with the fourth principal part, and then the present tense of sum. Now, let's not even focus on the paratos part. If we just look at the second word, sum es est, sumus est est sunt. This doesn't change. Sum es est, sumus est est sunt from verb to verb. It doesn't matter what kind of verb you have, you're going to use the present form of sum, which are these six forms. Use them as separate words entirely. Do not try to attach them to make this some crazy looking word. Paratos sum. That would be weird. Paratos sum is your form. Paratos s, paratos est. Okay. Now, since this is the perfect tense, we do need to translate it with the word have or has. But it's also passive, so we need to put in some sort of form of to be in English, which is strange since we're using to be in Latin as well. So hopefully you're seeing that it's really not that much different from the English. So 
this first one. It's I, since we're using some, you see that M ending. I have been prepared. You have been prepared. He, she, it has been prepared. We have been prepared. Y'all have been prepared. They have been prepared. There are lots and lots of pieces. So for the first word, you see with some, I have. Okay, now translate some as have when it's with a fourth principal part. So I have been warned. That's what this word means, to warn. So been is attached to this form since this is what makes it passive. Been warned is the meaning of monit, that stem. Okay. So I have been warned, you have been warned, he, she, it has been warned, and so on and so forth. Pluperfect passive indicative, we're still going to use the same format, except we're not going to use sum, s, s, sumus, s, to sun. So starting with the fourth principle part, don't change it at all until you get to the plural, and then you can change it for those last three forms. That fact is actually one that messes people up the most. So let's look at the forms we add to this to be the second word. We use aram, aras, arat, aramas, aratus, arat. Notice that these are the same endings that we attach to the pluperfect active. So pluperfect, no matter what, active or passive, is going to use these endings. Except in the passive, they're whole separate words instead of attached to the original word. Okay? So uh, paratos eram, paratos eras, paratos erat. Now, I had, pluperfect is had, I had been prepared, you had been prepared, uh, he, she, it had been prepared, we had been prepared, y'all had been prepared, they had been prepared. So take it one piece at a time. Who's doing the action? The M tells me that, I. Era in a two-word format tells me had. Um, this fourth principle part tells me been, that it's passive. Been, and then this stem tells me warned. Okay, so do those pieces. I had been warned. From the back of the word to the front of the word, just like the actives. Talking about future perfect. Um, now we are... Uh, we are talking about the last tense, the least used of the perfect system, and we're still going to start with that fourth principle part. Nothing changes for the stem, and nothing changes as far as the number of words. This is the first word, and then we're going to need another one. Let's look at what the other word is going to be. We're going to use ero, eris, erit, erimis, eritis, erunt. Be careful, erunt. Um, you will hopefully notice that most of these are identical to the endings used for future perfect active from the last video. Now I say most of them because let's go down here. Ero, that's the same. Eris, same. Erit, same. Erimus, the same. Eritus, all the same as the active forms except this guy. Remember when I gasped in the last video um, when we used an errant ending? Um, well, errant cannot appear ever by itself as one word. It's like errant can't stand on its own two feet. It doesn't have two feet to stand on or something. So um, we must use errant as the full word since this is a two-word format. These are not one word, but two words. So future perfect, same translation. It'll be will have. Add in the form of to be in English, which will be been, um, and everything else is the same. So I will have been prepared, you will have been prepared, he, she, it will have been prepared, we will have been prepared, y'all will have been prepared, they will have been prepared. And that's it. All right, so hopefully you had um, a good little recap of the perfect passive indicative. And remember, that means a two-word format, always, always, always in the passive. So let's see. Um, let's do the verb. Oh, think, think, think. Um, 
for a good passive verb. Um, okay, specto, spectare, spectawi, spectatus. It's first conjugation. That doesn't really make these any easier or harder uh, because you're using that fourth principle part. So let's use specto, spectare, spectawi, spectatus um, to watch. And I'd like you to put it in the plue perfect. Um, let's do the they form. Plue perfect, passive, they form. Now, of specto, spectare, spectawi, spectatus, you want to use that last principal part, spectatus, and add a separate word. Good luck with that. Um, and I kept it under 15 minutes. Woo! Um, but follow that direction, fill out the log, and I'll see you probably tomorrow ish. Straw out.